TIG, tungsten inert gas, where the tungsten is the material of which the electrode is made of and the inert gas is the gas coming out of the torch's nozzle, commonly argon gas. The lens, the pink piece at the end of the gun that adds a much needed feminine touch to an overly masculine design, can have different shapes and it affects the way the gas is dispensed onto the weld and the amount needed to shield it properly. Here's how it works. The electrode is charged with enough voltage to create an arch with the part and enough amperage to create the heat necessary to melt the parts that need to be welded together. Once you have created a little pool of melted metal, we can start adding the metal filler to fill up the space between the two parts and strengthen the joint. You do need to get into the right rhythm though. You add the filler and then you spread it with a torch. If you get it right, you'll get the sought-after stacked coin look, typical of this welding technique. To join two thicker pieces, it's ideal to bevel the edges to form a V-shaped gap between the two pieces and ensure a deep penetration of the weld. If needed, more passages can be overlapped to achieve full filling of the gap. But why the gas, you may ask? Well, the inert gas is there to protect the melted metal from contamination from the oxygen that would cause oxidation and result into a weak weld. An ACDC TIG welder is best suited for aluminum welding. When exposed to oxygen, aluminum forms an oxide layer that melts at a much higher temperature than the aluminum itself. 3600 degrees Fahrenheit versus the 1200 degrees Fahrenheit of the base material. To solve this problem, AC welding has two cycles. During the first cycle, called EP or electropositive, where the current flows from the workpiece to the electrode, the aluminum oxide is blasted off the surface, creating a clean area. During the second cycle, called EN, or electronegative, where the current flows from the electrode to the work, the arch produces enough heat to melt the clean aluminum and fuse the joint. The two cycles combine the cleaning stage to the welding one. Let's take a look at a couple of controls we can find on a TIG welder. The pulser allows for the operator to keep temperatures of the workpiece in check, alternating between two amperages values, the maximum and the minimum. It can decide the frequency of the switches and the percentage of the time of one phase over the other. All of this is to try to keep the workpiece at an ideal temperature. Then we have the pulse flow setting. It determines how many seconds the flow of gas will remain active after the arch is shut off. This is done so that the well can be protected from oxygen contamination long enough for it to cool off.